Okay, so let's see if I can do this beauty justice. Because, as the title says, this is my Epidendrum Parkinsonianum. First time in bloom for me. But considering all the names, I'm surprised it doesn't actually have an identity crisis. It is now known as Coiler Stylus Parkinsoniano. So we've gone from a severely Latin name of Parkinsonianum to something very feminine, I think. Coilo Stylus Parkinsoniana is very feminine. And I suppose that would kind of match the shape of the blooms. They're so delicate and their perfume. Ah, if you could bottle it, I'd wear it. But it is also known as Parkinson's Cola Stylus, Brassavola Pescatorii, Epidendrum Aliofolium, Epidendrum Falcatum variety Zeledonie. Take your pick. <laughs> when I Google this, um, I always now see Coilostylus Parkinsoniana. Just so happens that I am very old school and I will stick with Epidendrum Parkinsonianum. But I must say that regardless of the name, it's a complete joy to see this beautiful, beautiful epiphyte bloom. So basically, from Mexico through Central America and Panama. And strangely enough, it's not that easy to find, which is kind of surprising in my opinion, because supposedly that it's quite easy to propagate with every little node when the roots grow over there. You should be able to take it off like a keiki and grow it on. So I suppose, I don't know what happened out there in the wild. Maybe their beauty has caught on and people are just harvesting them, I don't know. But they're not that easy to find out in the wild anymore. I grow mine in my preferred setup of full lecker in a self-watering pot. It is supposed to be mounted. And I'm going to have to consider what I'm going to do when it starts new growths. I'll be watching it closely because with the new growths come new challenges with roots that in my case would be very, very aerial. So again, we've got the situation that something is doing really, really well in a setup for a certain amount of time. And it's possible that that setup needs to be revisited, adjusted in order to accommodate the needs of the orchid. And if that includes mounting it, then that's what's going to happen. In the meantime, this is all I'm going to do for the time being is watch, wait, observe and learn. So this is my first time bloomer. It's got these beautiful, beautiful, long pendant leaves. And it is a very highlight orchid, but being down here in the Mediterranean in the southern part of Spain, Highlight could be different to high light. There's always the variable like, you know, black is not black, white is not white. So my highlight in the summer is in shade in my prime real estate location where it will get maybe an hour or two of afternoon sun. Direct sun and that's it. That's when the sun is setting and not at its hottest. And in the winter, when it's not growing much or anything, it is on the top, top shelf of the dining room grow area that I have under blurpal lights. So it maintains its pendant growing habit in the winter, of course, because I have it on a top shelf, very similar to how I have it right now. But there are blurpal lights coming from it. So the top part of the orchid gets Blurple lights and then it basically fades and fades and the light gets weaker and weaker as we go down. I don't do much else except keep it well watered in this current state, well, well fertilized when it starts to get into growth mode. 
and basically my fertilizing did actually start when I saw the buds form. Very unfortunate that I missed out on this growth here blooming and if it would let me show you you can see there some things have dried up and they didn't make it. However I am extremely extremely grateful for these two gorgeous absolutely gorgeous blooms and I want to show you the spike and see if I can get that in focus so that you can see let me try it here the patterning on the bloom stalks isn't that amazing I think I, I, I just marvel at orchids they are the dinosaurs of the plant world, in my opinion. So she smells a little bit like freesias mixed with jasmine is how I can detect it. And extremely, extremely powerful at night. Absolutely a very, very pleasant fragrance coming in from the terrace door. And so far these blooms have been open now two weeks and they're still looking good, which is, in my opinion, astonishing for a species orchid. Very often I find species orchids blooms don't last as long as hybrids do. Let me see if I can get in a little bit further. Do her some justice. Let's see. I'm just testing my zoom. I think that's about as close and as good as we're going to get. So if you have any, any questions about this orchid and how I grow her, please let me know in the comments below. I just wanted to show her off. I think she absolutely deserves it. Look at that from the side. Just pure, pure elegance. Thank you everybody so much for watching. I hope you all have a wonderful day. Take care. Bye. Mm -hmm.